Ms. Janet Ang. Mr. Speaker, I'm Janet Ang and I would like to make the following declarations. Um, I'm the chairman of Cystic.com, an SME, independent director of SPH, council member of Singapore Business Federation, deputy chairman of SBA Foundation, and a former IBM managing director of IBM Singapore. And um, if, you, if you would allow me to make a couple of comments to address the minister's um, Minister of Communications and Information and Minister in Charge of Trade Relations proposed amendment to the Electronic Transaction Act. Of course, I start by saying this is my maiden speech and I support the bill, which is the reason why I took, um, you know, I'm up here. Well, you know, if you allow me, I will like to just remind us, you know, one of the key things is to create the future, we must understand the past. When I read the bill, of course, the first thing goes back to 1985 when we came back, with, when we came out, Singapore first launched TradeNet. So looking back at the past, you know, we always must um, have the lessons from the, from the lessons from our journey so far and develop our collective response to the opportunities and challenges ahead of us to ensure that Singapore 2.0 will be even better than 1.0 for ourselves, for our children, and for future generations to come. And as the past year has taught us, we learned to be resilient in the wake of disruptions like COVID-19 pandemic, to expect what the unexpected, to learn from past experiences like SARS, global financial crisis, and while at the same time to stay alert to constant changes, be agile and adapt as we go along, and most importantly, to strengthen our resolve for collective response to emerge stronger post-COVID-19, even as we are being tested at every level every day. It will be remiss of me not to take this opportunity, as this is my first time, to thank everyone in the House for all that you have done to lead and will continue to lead us safely and thoughtfully through these unprecedented times. And of course, special mention to the WOG, a whole of government task force at every level, and to our essential workers in the front line. As Singaporeans and residents, we were all grateful. We are all grateful. Now, Singapore has always led with a vision. Rallied Singaporeans and the community to work towards the common goal and execute together to make it a reality. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew and his team rallied Singaporeans with a vision to take Singapore from the third world to the first, from mud flat to metropolis, and our Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Sien Lung, in his National Day Rally speech of 2014, has yet again in, set in motion our transformation agenda to becoming the world's first smart nation. I feel so humbled to have the opportunity to be here in these very chambers where these visions and strategies for Singapore were and are being charted. Singapore's success lies in our collective ability to execute, and I have no doubt that once again, even with this bill and amongst others, we will do the same. Now, we are in an era of acceleration of digital. The coronavirus pandemic has propelled technology to the front, forefront of business agendas and into the lives of everyone. Work from home, home-based learning, safe entry, trace together and sing pass have become common vocabulary among Singaporeans and residents. We have all personally experienced during the last 12 months the search of e-commerce, the convenience of online food delivery, the proliferation of Zoom meetings and online webinars, and for me personally, K-dramas and masses crash landed into my living room. So acceleration to digital everything is on a different trajectory. Now on the business front, COVID-19 has accelerated business digitalization efforts across industries by almost two to five years and e-commerce trade have tripled, according to speakers at last week's World Economic Forum Davos Agenda. 
Now, in a recent National Business Survey 2020-2021 conducted by the Singapore Business Federation from October 9th to 28th of October, with respondents from more than 1,000 companies across key industries, 85% being from SMEs and 15% from large companies, it was found that 39% of the companies report that their IT digitalization budgets have increased as a result of COVID-19 situation. Now, the government's support has been and continues to be vital towards recovery, with 47% and 31% reporting that help with talent and building capabilities, especially in digital, respectively, were very re relevant. In the same survey, 58% of the businesses highlighted that the key barrier to digitalization is the perceived high investment cost of technology adoption. Other technology adoption challenges which they spelled out include the upskilling of staff, expensive licensing of IP, cybersecurity risks, and lack of management expertise to drive technology change. For more information on the survey results, of course, please refer to SPF. I highlighted these more specific related to their digitalization challenges. Now, just to again complete the backdrop of where all the SMEs in Singapore stand, based on IMDA's Digital Acceleration Index 2020, most Singapore SMEs have very low digital maturity scores, with 67% of SMEs being digital starters at the bottom. Now, by contrast, so that we don't think that we are that bad, Singapore's MNCs in IT and professional services sectors and the LLCs in financial services sector had outperformed their peers globally. So we can see the divide. Of course, the good news is that even for the SMEs, it did improve and increase between 2019 to 2020. So, Minister has given us a succinct proposition for why the amendments to the Electronic Transaction Act. Now, in my past life at IBM, I was involved with the Musk and IBM Trade Lens project, as well as initiating the PIL and IBM Electronic Bill of Lading pilot. We saw reduced time and reduced costs for trade document processing, and transactions were more secure, interoperable, and transparency and provenance was built into the system. Now, I believe that the bill for the ETA amendment is very timely, as the outlook for digital trade and digital services is rapidly growing. The lack of regulation and legislation globally does increase costs and increase risks for all. Singapore's leadership with trade trust the digital economy agreements with Chile, New Zealand and Australia, and now this ETA amendment will pave the way for accelerating digital trade safely with open, transparent standards for Singapore companies and give us a leg up in being plugged into the global trade ecosystem. New rules are needed in the digital economy and it is certainly far better to be co-writing the rules than to be playing catch-up. Now, that said, we are cognizant that COVID has exacerbated the divide between the haves and have-nots. We have seen during Circuit Breaker that access to computers and high-speed Wi-Fi for students to take part in HBL cannot be taken for granted. And likewise, for our SMEs, their ability to effectively participate and leverage the trade platforms created for their benefit cannot be assumed. 67% of SMEs are digital starters, and they are still battling with the barriers of investment costs, skills, management expertise, etc., to get across the digital chasm. Now, perhaps the following suggestions I'm going to make is already being considered, and so I beg your indulgence. Now, specific to the preparation for our businesses, especially the SMEs, for the adoption of electronic transactions, I believe we need to bear in mind that there will be increased costs in the short to mid-term when, when there are investments required and there is a time when both manual and digital will have to coexist. So one suggestion to consider is that the platform for digital trade to be part of a national infrastructure funded, sponsored by government or some PPP or some sectorial Queen B, pretty much like how the banks effectively bankroll PayNow to facilitate e-payment. 
PayNow Corporate has crossed more than 4 million registrations in December, of course accelerated by COVID, no doubt. But um, certainly it's because of the, how shall we say, the network effect. Now, innovation in business models, policies, regulation, technology and development of skills all go hand in hand. And um, so I, that's the first suggestion. The second is in terms of the management, they lack, SMEs lack the skills and the management uh, leadership and expertise to drive digital uh, trans transformation. So the lack of leadership expertise to drive this transformation is one of their challenges. And one suggestion or thought is for the government to consider seconding some of their tech scholars to work in SMEs or SME sectors on this digital transformation efforts. And uh, leveraging on a, the ETA amendment is definitely a good one to go with. Third suggestion, we have pay now, we have invoice now, our businesses have inquired about when we will have sign now, so that the companies can use e-signatures on banking documents and comply with the bank's compliance process, and I believe several speakers ahead of me have mentioned this. These are but some ideas and thoughts. We need ongoing dialogue among the stakeholders to listen to each other, to better understand the issues and find the solutions together. To conclude, I hope that we can take this unprecedented time of chaos caused by a health pandemic to forge ahead on how we might have an integral development approach to growth where we collectively, government, big corporations, large enterprises, well-endowed civil society, IHLs, together with the SMEs, bring all the SMEs along, bring those who feel that they are marginalised and disadvantaged along. The only criteria is that the SMEs and their teams are themselves hungry to survive and to grow and have the conviction and resolve to transform. To get on to the digital train, there are investments to be made and if you see the list of challenges which I shared earlier, the work to get them on the digital track must be now. Thank you. I support the bill, sir.